Automation is this helping me and what I'm most excited about is that I can take the industry experience that I have and say to the students, you know, these are the practical implementations. This is actually what is happening. This is why what you're learning is useful. And I love, love, love using South African examples of, uh, you know, huge organizations that we all know and look up to um, and, and try, you know, teach these, these, these young individuals how they're thinking and how they're applying exactly what we're busy doing to make their businesses grow. I've now thought of a way that we can give students different tests. Essentially what would happen is you would put in your student number, uh, you'd submit that off to um, the process which would then run in the background. That process would then uh, create or at least query your, your data services record, pull together all of the, the information that you need to be able to, to complete your test or at least get your test, and you'd be able to download that test um, and it would go straight to, to your folder uh, where you could access it. This then disappears, and uh, if you try to click on this again, it just uh, tells you that you, you don't have access to, to whatever you're trying to find. But essentially, that ensures that you can only sub, uh, download your files once. So in essence, what would happen is uh, this would be the question, or these would be the questions that are then uh, automatically filled in. So uh, all of these digits are then what are pretty much replaced and, and changed um, you know, on an automated basis. So this would all have a knock-on effect based on the criteria that you're being asked on as well. These, these numbers are also uh, automatically or randomly generated. The solutions are calculated in the background as well. So I'll show you now what that looks like in, in um, data services. So this is the question itself. Then if we look at um, the memorandum that's prepared, the memorandum, memorandum then gets uh, automatically generated as well. So here we can see that all of those numbers come in, the calculation is up as well. Um, and that's then pretty much those five, those five questions that have now been uh, automatically created. And then they've got an answer sheet as well. They can put in their calculations and their final answer. And because their answer is uh, you know, added in here, it makes it a lot easier considering we're now looking at a very structured format um, that we can actually take this information and we can, um, you know, start creating automated marking solutions. Because if you're, if you've got between 100 and 150 students creating a test for each and every single student and marking each of them individually based on a, a you know, pre-created memorandum, it's, it's pretty rough. Okay, so what's happening over here is we can see those randomly generated values that are popping up over here. Um, each of those different um, values that we're using, those different uh, variances, the percentage increases, all of those are, are randomly generated. And that helps us generate these answers over here, which then get pulled into the memorandum as well. That was something that I'd actually calculated, um, you know, very roughly when I decided to use UI Health apps. I'm very comfortable with building .NET for uh, MVC web applications. Um, you know, before UI Health app apps, that's kind of where I lived for a very long time. Um, so I kind of evaluated how long it would take me to, to do all of this in .NET Core instead of UI Health. Let's take a look at, at you know, even just a week, uh, a week's worth of work in, in .NET Core versus a day, a day and a half's worth of work in UI Health. It's a, it's a pretty big difference, especially if you're going to be doing four to six of these tests a semester. So when I'd initially set up the base test, it took me about four hours to put the test together. But if I had to think about it, even if you had to, you know, use Excel to kind of input all that data and figure out if you can do a lot of those calculations um, before you actually formalize the test, it would take you a good two, two and a half hours to, to put together one test. So, I mean, if you're looking at, let's say, 110 tests, you're looking at 220 hours. <laughs> it's a lot. It's just one. We, we've uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, lecturers this site have looked at between two and six major tests a semester. So within the education space, I think there's a phenomenal amount of growth for automation. I don't think it's something that's applied as much as it could be. Um, especially, you know, we're seeing it quite a lot in the computer science and information systems and information technology um, faculties. This isn't something that a lot of people are applying. And considering, you know, the, the industry that we're living in and the industry that we're working in and where we're going, I think these are the things that we should be looking at. And I think, you know, in the automation space, we've got to be very cognizant of what the world is going to look like when you enter it. Um, and I think that's something that, that students, you know, generally kind of lack. And it's something that the Northwest University and, and I'm pretty sure other universities as well have been very, very dedicated to solving. 
is how to bridge that gap between industry and, and you know the, the, the universities and exit level grads. So that's been a really interesting um, you know thing for us to bring into our lectures and into our modules and, and into the, the education uh, cycle. Just to kind of be there to realize, listen, I'm not there to take somebody's job. I'm there to help people grow and to move into new spaces and you know evolve because that's the thing. I think a lot of people use automation in the sense that it's just going to you know completely reduce my costs where they could be using that opportunity to help employees you know get new skills and, and they could be building automations i think that's one of the best things about the citizen development for me is for enabling those people in those people in that, those positions to be able to do it themselves which gives them value that they could you know take out into the market and they become part of our space so we kind of bridge that divide between you know i'm in it and i'm not or I'm in automation and I'm not. I think that's a really cool way to put it. And that's what I'm trying to get through to the students as well.